NBA trades used to be so dumb. I mean, I guess you can say that trades now are dumb. Ugh. I still can't believe that they traded all of those picks for Rudy Gobert. But trades that deal with all-star caliber players nowadays look like young player in return plus some draft capital. The perfect example is the Paul George trade, which is now kind of being called the Shea Gilgis Alexander trade, which is wild. The Clippers gave up a young promising player plus draft capital. But it wasn't always like that. Because I swear, in the 1990s, we're talking about all-star, all-NBA, Hall of Fame players were being traded for nothing. It seems like back then, every general manager had the idea to compete no matter the circumstances. Which I guess you can make an argument is kind of cool for the league where you don't have all of these teams bottoming out. But that's a conversation for another day. Let's take a look at Charles Barkley. Barkley spent eight seasons with the 76ers. Six of those years, he was an all-star. I mean, the brother was averaging 25 and a half points per game and 12 rebounds. But that summer, Barkley went on to play for the Dream Team and then realized, oh yeah, winning is kind of fun. So he never formally requested a trade, but everybody knew that Barkley wanted out. Now we know history. He ended up in Phoenix, ended up winning the MVP his first year in Phoenix. But do you remember what this man, Charles Barkley, the future MVP of the league, the future Hall of Famer, was traded for? Tim Perry, Andrew Lang, and Jeff Hornacek. <laughs> That's it. No draft capital, no young talented players, basically just Jeff Hornacek. Now Hornacek just had his first and only all-star season, so I guess that's what they were thinking about. He was going to have multiple more years of being an all-star, but he only played in Philly for one season before they traded him to the Utah Jazz. So Barkley, the guy that eventually went on to win MVP, was traded for one year of Jeff Hornacek. Now that is is nasty, nasty work. This is ridiculous, man. Jerry Colangelo was in charge over there with the Phoenix Suns, and he won executive of the year for this fleecing. But that's not the only example, because this trend happened a ton throughout the 90s and the early 2000s. What about the time that Greg Popovich gifted the Bulls the second three-peat? Dennis Rodman was traded to the Bulls for Will Purdue. That's NBA Hall of Famer for Will Purdue. Purdue and once again Michael Jordan's legacy gets saved. I'm burying the lead a little bit because Greg Popovich said that no team wanted to take a chance on Rodman because he was a hothead who never reported to camp and everybody knew Rodman was a project and the Bulls just had the balls to trade for him but still the last example I got is Mitch Richmond being a 25 year old bucket. He was averaging 23 points per game with the Golden State Warriors the run TMC we all know that but they struggled to get stops and they wanted to replace Mitch Richmond's score with a dude that could come in and get rebounds, block shots, and play the forward position. So they traded 25-year-old Mitch Richmond for the third overall pick that ended up being Billy Owens. Billy Owens had a solid NBA career, but he was no Mitch Richmond. You would think that trading a 25-year-old to get the third overall pick, that that was the start of like a rebuild or something. But nope, they kept the rest of that Warriors team and just shipped off the 25-year-old for the third overall pick, a, a role player, basically. And this happened over and over again in the 90s. And then people start to realize that draft capital is extremely important. Now, I don't know exactly what things started to change and people started to prioritize the first round picks and stuff. But I do know the moment where it turned to be an OD. And that was in 2013 when KG, Paul Pierce, and Jason Terry got traded to the Nets for all of the draft capital. I mean, that draft capital ended up being Jalen Brown, Markel Fultz, and Colin Sexton, all for aging KG and Paul Pierce. And since that moment, any team that was trading their star player wanted two to three future first round picks. I lost. 